Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin with breaking news this evening. Firefighters are still on the scene of a structure fire at an assisted living facility in South Fargo. They got the call at 3 this afternoon that a fire broke out at Elam Rehab and Care Center. That's at 3534 University Drive South. And shortly after, when the fire became more intense, more firefighters were called in to help. Let's find out what's happening now. Valley News Team's Alexandra Kay is live for us at the scene. Alexandra? That's right. As you can see behind me, there is still some smoke visibly coming from the roof of this building. Some small flames have only just been extinguished moments ago. There are crews from all over the area here working hard to take care of this fire. We have Fargo, West Fargo, and even more head fire departments on scene taking care of this fire. When we first arrived on scene around 3 p.m. today, that's when the fire broke out. Those flames coming from this building were huge, easily anywhere from five to 10 feet. I talked to the fire chief earlier today. He told me that they don't know what started this fire, but they do think that there are no injuries. Fire crews also say they don't know how long they're going to be on scene, but by the looks of it, it might be quite some time. Reporting live in Fargo, Alexandra Kay, Valley News Live. All right, thanks, Alexandra. To get the most up-to-date information, you can go to our Valley News Live app and click on this story. Law enforcement across the country are on the lookout for a North Dakota man who was on the run after he allegedly sexually assaulted a five-year-old girl last week. A nationwide warrant is currently out for 36-year-old Roberto Alvarez for two counts of first-degree aggravated rape. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with the victim's mother today. Bailey joins us in the studio now with a story that you'll only see here on Valley News Live. Bailey. Andrea, Nicole Lavalley says she was out of town last Thursday when her then-boyfriend, Roberto Alvarez, was in charge of her three children in Watertown, South Dakota. She says that evening she received a frantic call from her oldest daughter saying Alvarez had taken her five-year-old sister on a candy run to the gas station and said the little girl came back with hickeys on her neck. Lavalley says it was then she learned her young daughter had been sexually assaulted twice while out with Alvarez, something she says she never expected. I feel like I'm dealing with a Ted Bundy. He was a very good father, and I never, never thought he would do that to my kids. Lavalley says Alvarez is originally from Minto, North Dakota, and also has connections to the Fargo-Moorhead area, as well as Grand Forks. And when looking into his past, we found this isn't the first time Alvarez has faced sexual assault charges. He was charged in 2011 and later took an Alford plea after court documents say he raped a woman in Grafton. He's dangerous. He uses a tactic of being helpful and will go out of his way to make people think that he's a very good person when he has ulterior motives. Lavalley says Alvarez also goes by Roberto Sanchez and Carlos Sanchez, pleading for anyone with information to call authorities immediately. Andrea. All right. Thanks, Bailey. Lavalley says Roberto Alvarez also has connections in Mexico, Texas, and Oregon. But as of today, she believes he is still in North Dakota. Uh, back to that breaking news we have for you. Elam is a large care facility, and it lists 136 available beds. And uh, that's where the fire is uh, has been started at 3 this afternoon. There are a lot of residents then that have to be shaken up with what's been happening. So let's go live now to a news conference happening right now at the elementary school right next door to where the fire is happening. Texting everybody, let's letting them know it's, we're ready. Okay. And you guys will scroll these for us then? Sure. If I give yes. these to you? Yes. You Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome, we appreciate it. <clears throat> oh, again, uh, Fire Chief Steve Dirksen here on the scene of uh, a fire at Elam Care. I have with me Holly Scott from Fargo Cast Public Health and David, I forget your last name, Duvi from Elam, uh, who's their representative. Uh, again, just a, just a reminder, everybody, we had a, a fire call here at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, staff on scene uh, made an attempt to put the fire out, was not successful, um, began an immediate evacuation of people to a safe area within the building. All residents have been moved to a safe area. All residents are safe. Um, uh, we'll let Elam uh, give you more information on that. Uh, the fire was a little difficult to put out. We do believe we have it knocked down. I am, have begun uh, some of the overhaul operations to make sure that it is out. Uh, we have uh, 
a lot of fire units. We have seven Fargo fire units here. Uh, we have two Moorhead units, one West Fargo unit. We have about 25 paramedics from FM Ambulance. We have six ambulances, an AM bus. Uh, we've, we're ready here. Uh, we've been in contact all afternoon or since the, since the fire with the state of North Dakota, making sure everything, any resources that we may need would be available to us. We have not accessed any resources from the state at this point, um, but they are ready to help us if we need be. Uh, at this point, we don't know a cause. Uh, we do know that it, it started in the attic area on the roof. Um, that was the initial signs of where the fire was at. Uh, crews, when they arrived, they had heavy smoke, um, smoke in the building. The fire doors activated, the sprinkler system activated. Uh, we believe that that was helpful in holding it in place to where it was at. Uh, we did it once that uh, our crews uh, operated, the fire did break through the roof, as you can see behind me. Um, We've been operating interiorly and as in a defensive manner uh, since the fire began, uh, just working different options and tactics in order to get the fire out. Right now, we believe we do have it suppressed. It's not fully under control, but it's back in, in uh, where, we're, where we can manage it right now. Um, I'll turn it over to uh, David and uh, let him, uh, any comments from Elon? Yes, just want to assure everyone all of the residents are safe and we are actually feeding them. We spent a little time in the chapel. <laughs> they were singing and very happy and so everybody seemed really at ease in the midst of this and so great team here at Elam who serves well and immediately of course all of our staff jumped on board. We do have a couple of phone numbers that people can call and so I will give those to you and if you would kindly scroll those for us and provide that but we are working with the state of North Dakota for uh, um, placement for every Everybody, and we will be here till that is all completed. Okay, uh, options for placement. I mean, what are you guys looking at? What are you thinking? There are options. We have to coordinate with the state of North Dakota, so we aren't doing that independently. They are here on site, and, and then other representatives have been on the phone with us as well. So it has to all be done through the state. How bad are the damages? Uh, you know, the, the damage right now is very significant. Um, we have had some of the roof has collapsed. Um, no, there are no injuries, which is a good thing at this point. No, uh, no one has been injured. Uh, we had one little uh, incident that we were a little concerned about, but uh, everybody is okay. Uh, no injuries reported. Uh, additionally, we did have another structure fire within the city of Fargo at the same time. Uh, so that fire uh, happened as well. So it's been stretching our resources thin all afternoon. Regarding the residents, how many residents had to be moved mm -hmm. to the other part of the building and how many do you anticipate have mm -hmm. to be moved out? So we, we have 150 residents, 115 residents, and they were all moved to the safe location, the chapel area, and then we are working on actual placement for all of them at this time. Yes, we have a children's center, and all of those children were, were immediately evacuated and brought over here to the Eagles Elementary School, and they are all accounted for and safe. I can also say early on, uh, the school was still in session. Uh, we coordinated very quickly with Fargo Public Schools, and Fargo PD did most of that work and uh, had everything coordinated for the timely uh, pickup of, of children from school and are coordinated and coordinated with the daycare pickup as well. So it was a great coordinated effort by everybody within the community. Everybody stepped up, did a great job. We're grateful to have Salvation Army here taking care of our crews. Uh, Red Cross has been notified. XL Energy has been here and shut off the gas. Uh, so everything is, uh, is, is as working as good as can be expected at this point. How many children are in the daycare? I'm sorry? I actually don't have the exact number for you because that's a fluid number as they could already have been picked up some of them by the time the fire started. We can accommodate approximately uh, 35 to 40, but again, that number would be fluid at that time of day. I don't have access to that information, so I would defer you to the chief. Yeah, and at this point, we don't know exactly where. I don't believe there's any fire to that area of the building, but there was smoke throughout the building, and it was noticed very early on by our crews as they entered. Uh, very, they reported early on heavy smoke conditions within the building. But again, thanks to the, the great actions of the, the staff at Elam, they, they, they had a plan in place, they implemented it, they practiced it, and it worked flawlessly this afternoon. They did a great job. Uh, commendations to them. I just saw a couple of residents being moved into this building right here. Um, do you know why that is or what building they're being moved into? Yeah, we're moving a few of them into here and thank you to uh, um, Fargo Public Schools for letting us do this. We're moving them into here just for easier uh, transport and relocation and also to create a little bit more space in the chapel at this time. This is probably a question I'm, you guys won't know right now, but I mean, 
estimated amount of time that they're going to be displaced for. That yeah, that again, is, uh, unknown. It's it's a your guess is as good as ours at this point. So I want to give a shout out too to the to the fire department and like you said, the coordination here has been extraordinary. This is a great community. David, can you spell your last name and give us your title? Sure, I'm. My last name is Juve, J-U-V-E, and I'm the chaplain and campus pastor here at Elam. Um, the, the fire started on in the attic or on the roof area. Um, and it appears, uh, looking at things and talking with maintenance staff, that there were uh, some vents uh, that were there. Not exactly sure what that looks like or what that was, but that's kind of the general area of the building where it started. So everything started in the roof. Uh, in the attic area, um, and then broke through. So, no cause of fire, no yet. Uh, no cause at this time. Uh, it's going to be under investigation. It'll be it'll be a little while before we get there. We're going to have to do uh, a lot of work to get there. So, uh, uh -huh. stand by. All right, you're listening live to a press conference at Elam Rehab and Care Center, where a fire, a significant fire, broke out at three o'clock this afternoon. We will have much more on this story. So, stick with Valley News Live. The app is where you'll find that information. On to the weather now. The temperatures today were something to cheer about. The slippery roads were not. Let's find out what we can expect this evening with Hutch and your no-wait weather planner. While most of the area is staying quiet, our southern county is getting a dose of flaky weather with some picking up possibly a half inch to an inch down near the South Dakota border. You're looking live at our SkyCam network photo route there at the Dakota Magic Casino. Radar showing the intense snow off towards Duluth and south of Sisseton now, but still some light snow in Richland County as we have temperatures in the 20s to near 30 out in Lakes Country. Here in Fargo tonight, planning on temperatures kind of hovering in those mid-20s. We might see an isolated flurry or two as we go through the evening with light winds. All in all, pretty quiet, and our quiet trend continues. We'll have hour-by-hour -hour details on what you can expect for your Friday forecast coming up here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch.